The Gauss-Newton algorithm is used to solve nonlinear least squares problems. It is a modification of Newton's method for finding a minimum of a function. Unlike Newton's method, the Gauss-Newton algorithm can only be used to minimize a sum of squared function values. But it has the advantage that second derivatives, which can be challenging to compute, are not required. Nonlinear least squares problems arise for instance in nonlinear regression, where parameters in a model are sought such that the model is in good agreement with available observations. The method is named after the mathematicians Carl Friedrich Gauss and Isaac Newton. Description Given m functions are equals of n variables beta equals with m n, the Gauss-Newton algorithm iteratively finds the minimum of the sum of squares starting with an initial guess for the minimum. The method proceeds by the iterations where, if r and beta are column vectors, the entries of the Jacobian matrix are and the symbol denotes the matrix transpose. If m equals n, the iteration simplifies to which is a direct generalization of Newton's method in one dimension. In data fitting, where the goal is to find the parameters beta such that a given model function y equals f best fits some data points. The functions re are the residuals then, the Gauss-Newton method can be expressed in terms of the Jacobian JF of the function f as example. In this example, the Gauss-Newton algorithm will be used to fit a model to some data by minimizing the sum of squares of errors between the data and models. Predictions in a biology experiment studying the relation between substrate concentration S, and reaction rate in an enzyme-mediated reaction, the data in the following table were obtained. It is desired to find a curve of the form that fits best the data in the least squares sense, with the parameters and to be determined, denote by and the value of and the rate from the table. Let and we will find and such that the sum of squares of the residuals if then the problem is in fact linear and the method finds the optimum in one iteration. If lambda less than one of then the method converges linearly and the error decreases asymptotically with a factor lambda at every iteration. However, if lambda greater than one, then the method does not even converge locally. Derivation from Newton's method in what follows, the Gauss-Newton algorithm will be derived from Newton's method for function optimization via an approximation. As a consequence, the rate of convergence of the Gauss-Newton algorithm can be quadratic under certain regularity conditions. In general, the convergence rate is linear. The recurrence relation for Newton's method for minimizing a function s of parameters is where g denotes the gradient vector of s and h denotes the Hessian matrix of s. Since, the gradient is given by elements of the Hessian are calculated by differentiating the gradient elements. With respect to the Gauss-Newton method is obtained by ignoring the second-order derivative terms. That is, the Hessian is approximated by where are entries of the Jacobian junior. The gradient and the approximate Hessian can be written in matrix notation as these expressions are substituted into the recurrence relation above to obtain the operational equations convergence of the Gauss-Newton method is not guaranteed in all instances. The approximation that needs to hold to be able to ignore the second-order derivative terms may be valid in two cases, for which convergence is to be expected. The function values are small in magnitude, at least around the minimum. The functions are only, mildly, nonlinear, so that is relatively small in magnitude. Improved versions with the Gauss-Newton method the sum of squares of the residuum s may not decrease at every iteration. However, since delta is a descent direction, unless is a stationary point, it holds that for all sufficiently small. Thus, if divergence occurs, one solution is to employ a fraction of the increment vector delta in the updating formula. In other words, the increment vector is too long, but it points in downhill. So going just a part of the way will decrease the objective function s. An optimal value for can be found by using a line search algorithm, that is, the magnitude of is determined by finding the value that minimizes s.
usually using a direct search method in the interval. In cases where the direction of the shift vector is such that the optimal fraction is close to zero, an alternative method for handling divergence is the use of the levenberg marquardt algorithm, also known as the trust region method. The normal equations are modified in such a way that the increment vector is rotated towards the direction of steepest descent, where D is a positive diagonal matrix. Note that when D is the identity matrix I and then, therefore the direction of delta approach is the direction of the negative gradient. The so-called Marquardt parameter may also be optimized by a line search. But this is inefficient as the shift vector must be recalculated every time is changed. A more efficient strategy is this. When divergence occurs increase the Marquardt parameter until there is a decrease in S. Then, retain the value from one iteration to the next, but decrease it if possible until a cutoff value is reached where the Marquardt parameter can be set to zero. The minimization of S then becomes a standard Gauss-Newton minimization, large-scale optimization, for large-scale optimization. The Gauss-Newton method is of special interest because it is often true that the matrix is more sparse than the approximate Hessian. In such cases, the step calculation itself will typically need to be done with an approximate iterative method appropriate for large and sparse problems, such as the conjugate gradient method. In order to make this kind of approach work, one needs at minimum an efficient method for computing the products for some vector p. With sparse matrix storage, it is in general practical to store the rows of in a compressed form, making a direct computation of the above product tricky due to the transposition. However, if one defines ci as row i of the matrix, the following simple relation holds so that every row contributes additively and independently to the product. In addition to respecting a practical sparse storage structure, this expression is well suited for parallel computations. Note that every row ci is the gradient of the corresponding residual re. With this in mind, the formula above emphasizes the fact that residuals contribute to the problem independently of each other. Other applications. The Gauss Newton algorithm is a popular method for solving nonlinear inverse problems. A particular application is generating computational models of oil and gas reservoirs for consistency with observed production data. Related algorithms. In a quasi Newton method, such as that due to Davidon, Fletcher and Powell, or Broyden, Fletcher Gold, Farb, Shano, an estimate of the full Hessian is built up numerically using first derivatives only so that after n refinement cycles the method closely approximates to Newton's method in performance. Note that quasi-Newton methods can minimize general real-valued functions, whereas Gauss-Newton, Levenberg, Marquardt, etc., fits only to nonlinear least squares problems. Another method for solving minimization problems using only first derivatives is gradient descent. However, this method does not take into account the second derivatives even approximately. Consequently, it is highly inefficient for many functions, especially if the parameters have strong interactions.